Hey, it's been a while. I imagine most anyone could have guessed I'd be buried in Flyout at about now, and that I'd probably be building an ornithopter. Well, here it is. In a stark departure from Stormworks, this ornithopter is a replica. Specifically, it's a replica of the 1942 Schmidt ornithopter, which is one of the few man-carrying examples ever to fly in real life, and I believe the only one to ever take off under its own power. After thousands of hours of Stormworks, I cannot emphasize enough how fun this project was. To be able to build a scale model of not just any real thing, but an exotic real thing, and see it perform more or less the way it's supposed to? Wild. If you've had your eye on Flout, I'm happy to report it's pretty much exactly what I, and presumably many others from the Stormworks aviation sphere, had been hoping for. It's a little rough around the edges, and doesn't emphasize gameness nearly to the extent that Stormworks does, but with a solid physics engine and a world to explore, that suits me just fine. For all ten of you who care, does that mean that this channel is going to turn into a flyout channel? Pretty much, probably, yeah. Stormworks is still pretty unbeatable for maritime builds, and could certainly recapture a lot of my attention if it were to implement aerostatics or sails, but for now I'm pretty obsessed. The only major downside is flyout is not yet very scriptable, so ornithopters and other aircraft here are a bit more regular engineering and a bit less computer engineering. I happen to like both those things, so I'll probably have to get a Stormworks fix here and there. Anyway, I've already released this ornithopter on the Flyout Discord, so, as is custom, let's take a quick flight here and go over how to fly it, how I built it, and how it works. When I first wrote this script, there was a big section here about how the aircraft barely flies and how you have to treat it like it's from the dawn of aviation, plus a bunch of instructions on exactly how to do that. But then I took another gander at the real thing and saw I was undershooting its performance numbers by a pretty wide margin, and almost certainly way heavier than the real thing. So I did another round of weight shaving and also disabled aero modeling on the wing st strut visual details. Apparently those were creating tons of drag, because suddenly my performance is much closer to the real thing, and a lot more forgiving. Still, instructions. Start by applying a little throttle. This flapping mechanism is not throttleable as is, so just pulse the input if you need taxi power. Hold down for takeoff and flight. Then, as you begin to take off, you'll find the aircraft weather vane sharply into the wind. For minor crosswinds, this can be compensated with strong but careful rudder. In general, though, this is an aircraft you very much want to launch upwind. If the crosswind is strong, it may make the decision for you. Now, allow the aircraft to accelerate. It will become light on the ground at about 20 knots. This is when the weather vane tendency is strongest. It will lift off naturally around 30 knots. Once clear of the ground, nose down a little and pitch for 40 to 45 knots to clear ground effect. Climb between 40, uh, 45 and 50 knots. Now, as we settle into a climb, let's talk design. I'm sorry to say I didn't record the build for this ornithopter. Every time I try to record a build, it never goes anywhere. Every time I build something I'm proud of, I was never recording. In truth, though, you aren't missing much. It was mostly trial and error trying to get the flapper wing geometry just right. Boring to watch, as much as I enjoyed it. Trial and error aside, this is a very simple aircraft. A very small, very light fuselage with a big fixed wing and a little bit of detailing. I'm pleased with how it came out, but process-wise it wasn't much to write home about. I just looked at pictures of the real thing, did my best, and got lucky. Flapping, however, was a bit more of an adventure. If you've seen the last video I uploaded, this isn't my first airworthy ornithopter, but my second. Naturally, the first to fly wasn't my first attempt, either. I bought the game from hour zero and tinkered with ornithopters right away, but I was discouraged by the lack of any and all forward progress from my first test rigs. Not to mention I was having enough trouble trying to get my long easy alike flying. So I decided to table the problem amid concerns that the way flyout measured wing performance might not account for the motion of wings relative to the fuselage. Naturally, the next step would be to test that on its own, but I got distracted by flying wings for a few days along the way. Anyway, when I got around to it, this is the test rig I came up with. A simple jet copter on a spindle. If it flew, then flyout did measure everything relative to each wing individually, and I was in business. For reference, this sort of rig does not work in KSP-2. Well, sure enough, in flyout, it flew. That meant it was time for round two. Or at least it would be once I'd sunk ten more hours into flying wings. As much as I'd love to say I was the first to build a working ornithopter, round two was kicked into gear when Chrislin, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, a user from the Flyout Discord, proved the concept. I'm not sure if Chrislin's ornithopter is the very first, but it's the first one I can attest to. 
and the first which I know by whom it was built. There were rumors from Closed Alpha, but I don't know much about them. If you had one working back then, by all means post. I'd love to keep track of the development history of these things. Anyway, now that I could be confident it was possible, I sat down again to build another testbed. This time, I came armed with vague ideas of how to use the input editor, so I set about to solve a major problem that I ran into the first time, how to automate the relationship between wing incidents and wing beat without scripting. I still wasn't sure how I would automate the beat, but I figured manual would be good enough in the short run as long as I could tie incidents and beat together. The plan was simple. Bind both beat and incidents to an input that would snap full when pressed and then fall to the bottom when released. As long as sensitivity for the incidents control was higher than sensitivity for the beat control, incidents should always get done first, and incidents should already be done by the time the beat begins. So I set about a test rig based on that concept. And, by grace of the holy Jonathan Livingston Seagull, it flew right away. Not only did it fly, it was stable and it was fast. Gone were the days of Stormworks 60-knot ornithopters. I was pulling 150 knots and I wasn't even trying to optimize. Of course, I also had crippling finger cramps from spamming my T key, but a quick auto hotkey script was enough to get a video recorded. In the meantime, I got in touch with Chrislam. The mechanism Chrislam used appeared to be continuous and not rely on auto hotkey, so I was very interested to know how it worked. Turns out it's as simple as it is clever. Rather than controlling a flap and incident separately, a pair of counter rotating hinges are arranged in a sort of pseudo swash plate and used to rotate the wing on both axes at once. Here's how it works. A hinge and a swing joint are given absurdly high max angles so they can turn continuously. The swing joint is then mounted on the hinge, and both are rotated opposite one another. Since they rotate at the same rate, an object attached to the swing joint remains in place. Now, the swing joint is pivoted several degrees on the hinge. Now the axis the swing joint spins along remains in place, but the vertical axis oscillates up and down as the tilt of the swing joint processes around the hinge. This motion, coupled with the tilt itself, provides both the amplitude and incidence the beating wing needs together in a single continuous motion. This does require two stack joints, which Gary's Mod and Stormworks have trained me to be allergic to, but Flyout seems to be able to handle them quite well. Anyway, the first thing that struck me about this mechanism is that the motion it produced resembled that of the mechanism used by the Schmidt Ornithopter in real life. Tantalized by the opportunity to build an actual replica Ornithopter, something Stormworks had never quite granted, I tabled my original plans to iterate on the mechanism and instead set about building a Schmid. It seemed like an appropriate first release for Flyout, and would allow me to see how Ornithopters in Flyout stacked up against one of the few real-life counterparts when built to scale. As it turns out, they stack up pretty closely. Exactly how closely is difficult to say, as information on the Schmidt is very scarce and not well cited, but Ornithopter.org claims it flew several times with a 3 horsepower and later with a 6 horsepower engine, during which it attained 60 and 80 km per hour cruises respectively. With a takeoff speed of 55 kph and a max cruise of 100 kph, this falls just a little bit on the fast end of that. We'll chalk that up to it being because it's supposed to be a complete, production-ready version of the aircraft. Really, it's just because I can't get away with making it any lighter in order to get away with making it a little bit weaker, but hey, uh, for something as out there as an ornithopter, I'll call that a win. Now, how I got into this overperforming position is kind of funny. The first version of this ornithopter I released, as I said earlier in the video, barely flew. Today I sat down to write the script for this video and made a few tiny adjustments while testing the numbers one last time, and suddenly picked up like 30% more performance envelope. Most of this had to do with weight reduction and disabling drag on the wing struts, which, as I said, seemed to be pretty overrepresented in drag. If you want to experiment with figures closer to the real-world flight, try lowering the tilt on the swashplate portion of the wing beat mechanism by about 5 degrees. This decreased amplitude produces a max cruise of about 80 kph, and probably handles closer to the real thing in general, but it also makes takeoff and exercise in patience and very careful rudder work, and makes launching upwind totally non-negotiable. I'll be sticking with the overperforming version for release. So, does this replica represent the pinnacle of flyout ornithopter technology? Well, while I'm very pleased with it, especially for my first serious attempt, it is a replica, and practically speaking, I think the design is far from ideal as ornithopters and flyout go in general. 
Off the top of my head, I think the dragonfly design I commonly use in Stormworks would probably produce much better thrust, a much higher top speed, and smoother motion than the stubby hybrid fixed-wing design used by the Schmid. I'd love to know more about why the Schmid was designed the way it was, though. I'm sure there were very good reasons. After all, it's one of very few man-carrying ornithopters to ever fly. Something to do some digging on later. In any case, I'll be getting to testing more traditional, non-replica designs while this video is uploading, so hopefully you'll hear from me soon. Until then, thanks for watching, and play Flyout, it's great.